Hello, today we will talk about pictographs. Um, that's usually the last chapter in a pre-algebra book. And uh, you may or may not get to this, but it is a life skill, so I will go over it. Make sure that um, you learn how to do these. They are kind of fun. All right, pictographs. I've seen pictographs last time when I was in kindergarten, and the newspapers also like it. Um, so if you read newspapers, they just love those those things. They have pictures in them. Um, so it's a graph in which pictures or symbols are used. This type of graph should contain a key because each one may mean something. It may mean one thing. It may mean a uh, thousand things. So you have to give them a key. And here it's a little blurry, but it gives you a key here. So let's do a pictograph. Um, advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> um, Okay, let me see. Uh, comparisons can easily be made. Hard to tell what fractional part of a symbol is used. So let's come up with some example. Let's say um, I want to um, say something like three little boys and they all have cats. I mean, that kind of silly example. I have Joe and I have Patrick. And I have uh, Kevin. All right. Now, um, you may have it like that. You don't even have to have that thing. And Joe has two cats. And you can put a cat here and another cat. Here's a cat boy. Patrick has three cats. Make sure you line them up, and you just have fun with this kind of problem. And Kevin has one cat. There are 62, did you notice? And these are cats. My mom taught me how to do this. And this one is, you can label your axes, names of boys. And this one is cats. And you have to have a symbol, remember? Here's a symbol. You can say one cat. Now, if um, you meant that this one meant um, two cats, then you could have said, so you can also do it this way. You can put a tick mark. I didn't see that much, but you can do it that way. But that's usually optional. You have fun with it. As long as it is clear, you'll be fine. Okay, so that's a pictogram. Um, now, it may happen that, let's say we're not talking about a cat, but we're talking about, like, um, money. And here's a coin. And this one is, let's say, a dime. And you want to say half of a dime, you can show it like that. So I even saw that. So if you want to do some fractional things, you do that. But the problem is, um, if you have like two-thirds of something, it is harder to divide a picture into two-thirds than giving you a number. So a pictograph may not be the best choice for those kind of things. Now let's talk about bar charts. These are a little better. You can have bar charts. These are if you use any kind of spreadsheet program you know that you use the bar chart. A bar chart goes like there's an axis, another one. It can be horizontal like this, or it can be vertical like that. So um, there are two ways of doing it, vertical and horizontal bars, and scales are more accurate. They're a little bit better than the pictographs, but they're not as much fun. You can make them 3D or something like that to make them more exciting. So let's try to do a bar chart. I'll do it by hand, and then I'm going to use um, some kind of, um, you know, a spreadsheet to do that. Electoral votes for president. So you can have a bar chart. I'm not going to even use a ruler. Just draw hand, you know, freehand. Let's say I have states, and then I just put the state in there: Texas, California. Florida, Nebraska, 
Indiana, Georgia. All right, um, just try to fit it in there. And electoral votes, so this one is electoral votes. Now, when you draw a, a map like that, a, a chart like that, what you need to do is just look at your minimum and maximum. My minimum is 11 and my maximum is 55. So I can have maybe uh, a scale of 10 and make sure they're equidistant. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right? So Texas has 34. 34 is a little less than here. So I just can't put a bar chart like that. You can have gaps. You may not have gaps. You may use colors. California has 55. 50 is here. 60 is there. 55 is around here. California. I'll have gaps just for fun. Here's California. You can do it different colors. Florida has 27. 30 is here, 27 is around here. Nebraska has 5. 5 is going to be around here. Indiana has 11. 11 is going to be around here. Yellow may not be a good choice. And Georgia is 15. 15 is going to be around here a little bit more than that. Does it make sense? All right. Uh, if the process is reversed, they are giving you the graph and they are asking you. They are not looking at this. They may say, okay, how many electoral votes does California have? You can kind of go and read it. You may or may not be able to see the difference between 55 and 54. It all depends on your scale. So this may not be a good choice if you want accuracy. Or another way is to get accuracy is to put the labels on them. Does it make sense? And so forth. Oh, let me show you uh, the computer equivalent of that. It looks a lot better. But again, you have to put your title in there. And you have to put your states and the votes. You can have a title and you can have a legend, a key. You can also do the same thing this way. All right? If you're doing that way, votes are that way, and the uh, states are that way. So you can do it either way. So make sure that you, you can use um, a computer program. This is not the scope of the, um, this presentation, but Excel may be a good way to uh, represent these things. All right. This is the end of this section.